Hey guys, this is Dr. J Mac, and welcome to my new series, WTF US Healthcare. <laughs> All right, guys, today what we're going to do, we're going to talk about Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drugs Pharmacy. Brand new. It's got a lot of hype behind it. What we're going to do is we're going to take the retail price of a drug, which is usually extremely high, the good RX price of the drug, which is the cash out of pocket price that you pay going outside of kind of the insurance prices, etc. And then we're going to give you the Mark Cuban's CostPlusDrugs.com price. Here we go. Today, we have an amazing guest. We are so, so lucky to have Phil's My Pharmacist. You know him from TikTok. You know him from Instagram. You know him from YouTube. He's a very smart, very personable, charming guy. He's good looking too, ladies. And he's going to be giving us um, the lowdown on Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drugs. Phil, welcome to the series. Hey, thanks, Dr. J. Mac. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And I am at least two out of all those things you just said about me. Maybe two and a half. So just depends on the day. Oh, I'm excited to look at these lists because I like the hype behind it all. But the thing about it is, is hype's hype sometimes. Right, exactly. You know, a lot of people think that this is something that's going to completely change the game in healthcare. Um, and I want to believe that. Everybody wants to believe that. But yeah, now, now it's time to kind of see where, where hype meets reality. Right, exactly. Is this real savings or is he just selling a few tickets in the upper bowl at, Ma at the Maverick game? I mean, which one no, really is? I hope not, genuinely. In, in I do too. I hope it's real. Let's go. Okay, so our first drug that we're going to look at is the one that you see when you literally go to costplusdrugs.com. It is the very first price. It is the one that they are most excited about advertising. So let's talk about it. This drug is called imatinib. The brand name is Gleevec, and it's a drug for cancers, leukemias, etc. The retail price, $2,502.50. WTF US Healthcare. Right. The good RX price. It's also, it's also like 20 years old, just so everybody knows. This is a 20-year-old drug. Just this is so not a new drug. How are they selling it for that much? Is that because they're the only people selling it? Well, you can buy a churro for $12 at Disneyland, or you can buy one for 50 cents at the gas station. So it depends on where you're going. That's why this is important. All right. That's not, why this is important. The retail doesn't mean you pay it. It's just right. that they can list it. And... In particularly, there's a lot of people who go after people that feel desperate. And if you have cancer, um, you'll pay anything to get rid oh, of it. And so it, it's heart. a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. So the retail price, $2,502.50. The good RX price, that is the out-of-pocket price, um, cash price at a pharmacy is $134.54, which is already a huge difference. But... Even more impressive is the cost plus drugs price at seventeen dollars and ten cents. There you go. That's right? amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. But even just ignoring the the cash price of GoodRx, or sorry, even just ignoring retail completely and just looking at that GoodRx price, one hundred and thirty four dollars down to seventeen dollars, is really impressive. Really impressive. But the question has to be: Is it maintainable too? Because right now he can get at that price. But with shortages, is that price going to change in six months? Did he load up on one and put it at his top drug and say, look how amazing I am? Or is this, mm. he promises this for the next two years while you're fighting through your leukemia? That's a really good point. Is this one of those things where, you know, you, you are searching for airplane tickets, you find the perfect ticket, you come back six months, and then that ticket is 10 times more expensive. And, uh, and I would assume that you're right. Um, you know, obviously we, we can't, we can't say what, what he is planning to do in the future, but that these probably are moving targets depending on, um, supply and demand, which is just, I mean, in the craziest place that it's ever been since I've been alive in this world. Absolutely. I doxycycline used to cost me three cents a pill. It jumped up to $3 a pill about four, four years ago, overnight oh couldn't get it because the producer of the raw product in China just jumped their price up and everybody had to do it. So and that's does $3 really a control, pill. Right. Does he have control to really say this stays and how does he control that supply chain? Mm. Cause nobody else has been able to, but you know what? $2,000 that's reprehensible. Whoever did that, they need to go to hell. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm with <laughs> you on that. 
Um, well, let's uh, let's just start outing people on social media, and maybe they'll be a little bit more hesitant to set some of these prices. Right. We're getting a lot better at that, by the way. I think there is a certain accountability that has come in the era of social media that I'm stoked about. I am too. I, clarity and honesty makes it easy. If somebody says, Phil, you did this, if I don't try to make myself better, what good is any of this anyway? I don't, right. you can't hide. Well, you talk about clarity, clarity and honesty, and that's one of the things that I feel like they're doing very well on this website is they're showing us, they'll show us how much they get the drug for. They're like, we're buying it for this. We're doing a 15% markup and we're selling it for this. And that makes me respect them so much more than, you know, the, the standard way of doing things in, in medicine, which is you get the product first or you decide that you're completely dependent on this product and you have to get it. You get it. And then you figure out how much you're paying for it. You know, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't happen anywhere else in the U.S. Right. Well, it's like you're going into a store and, and, and they bring this prescription. It's like you're rolling the roulette table and seeing where it's going to land. You have no clue what to even expect. <laughs> you have no idea. You just know that you need it. It's not even them. It's the doctors, too. I probably have half a dozen doctors call me and say, what can I write that's, that is affordable in this category? Right. Because we don't the know. doctors... Why would you know that? Why would I want that in my doctor's brain? I don't want my doctors to have to know that stuff. I want them to remember how to diagnose it properly or if the EEG looks different. I don't want them to have to say, oh, doxycycline tripled. In I don't want that in your brains at all. I want you to do right. your job and then say, now go to GoodRx or Simple Care or Blink and don't go into the pharmacy without knowing what you should pay. Well, and that's, and that's one of um, the, the issues with medicine is that everything is so disconnected all of these different specialties are kind of on their own islands, right? So it's very important for there to be communication between the different specialties. It's very important for you to be able to call the doctor that has prescribed a certain drug and guess what they don't do on costplusdrugs.com? They do not call doctors. In the, in the FAQ section, they mention that. They say, we are not going to call doctors basically for any reason. And, um, and so that includes refills. You're going to have to um, do that legwork on your own. And is that worth it to you for these prices? Probably. But there is a really important element in that connection between pharmacists and, and doctors. That communication um, is very important for the patients. And that is being canceled out. And, you know, one of, one of the benefits of that are these prices. Um, is it worth it? I don't know. I guess time will tell. Well, the other thing that's nice is if a patient brings in to me saying I can get this here or there for this price, mm -hmm. if they're my patient, I want to keep them. It gives me an opportunity to earn their business. So mm -hmm. even if it's just you look at his price and say, hey, will you match this? My guess is, is it's not as hard to match that as you think it is, mm -hmm. because when we get reimbursed from an insurance, they're probably paying me $17 for the Gleevec. But then the cash price is something different. So there's a lot of times where his prices will be better than the price I get from somebody's insurance company or Medicaid. So mm. it's not, don't think this is going to kill all retail pharmacies. It's just going to make us work for your business, which, hey, I like my patients. I'll work for them. <laughs> Well, that's awesome, man. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We have so much to talk about, though. This is great, man. This is a really yeah. good conversation. I'm loving this. Okay, um, so generic drug, Montelukast, all right? The brand name that people probably know it by is Singular. This is a medicine for um, allergies and more commonly um, for asthma. The retail price, $169. The good RX price, $14.30. And the cost plus drugs price, $6. There you go. It's pretty good. It was That's on uh, the Walmart and all those other plans, 90 day plan for $10. So a lot of people do it for 90 days for $10 already. Oh, wow. That. Okay. So it depends on quantity too. And then if you wanted to come yeah. in and say, Hey, I'm going to be on this for a year. You can say, I want to buy 300 of them you probably get it for like $40 at most places. So that's really? the other so thing. So you can bargain when you go to the pharmacies. This is huge. I had no idea. Oh yeah. If somebody comes and say, I want to buy a year's worth of my Synthroid, you'll get it at a quarter of the cost. Because I only this have to do the so work. so helpful. Once. So I only have to do it once. I don't, have to, I don't have to run your prescription through and put a label and put a bottle and screw it on. Make sure I only have to do it once. So by doing it, I can make more money off of doing it a year at a time. Wow. Okay. So it's a good price, though. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm impressed as well. Um, but I'm more impressed by the idea that if you know you're going to be on a drug for a certain amount of time, that's a bargaining chip for you. 
and better for the pharmacy because you know that you're going to get their business for that entire fill and better for the patient because then they pay less money. That's huge. Right. And easy too. Good tips. Easy. Phil, Phil's We're all my pharmacist. Easy. Phil's my pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, I think people probably wonder what your last name is, and I think we should just leave it as Z my pharmacist. Well, Z my pharmacist. Right. Well, and the funny thing is, is that I actually get phone calls all the time because the sleuths out there will figure out where my pharmacy is, and wow. they're so nice. So, uh, so oh, they're so nice though. So it's not like a creepy really thing nice. where they're like, "Phil, I found you." <laughs> they're like you really are you really answer your own phone so i'm like well of course i gotta go to work like everybody else i'm yeah, here all the yeah. time what do you think i'm doing it's happened a couple of times where i've gone into a patient room and they're like are you that tiktok doctor and i'm like yes <laughs> is that okay and they're like right. totally i'm excited can i take a picture for my son i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> i got free cookies that was my favorite i went into a cookie shop <laughs> and she goes i'm totally fangirling here it was like i'd only been doing it for like three weeks and i was dying because i had nobody had ever said that to me before and i got free cookies out of it and it was free cookies come on that's what life's about is free <laughs> that's cookies. what life's about that's why we do it that's, <laughs> that's why we right. do it baby just the cookies All right. so next drug um an oldie but a goodie methylprednisolone uh is the generic name brand name is medrol uh this is a steroid we use steroids for everything i can't even name all of the things so many things dermatologic right. conditions uh asthma you use it Bats. for infectious reasons for back pain we use it for everything um and this steroid retail price is 49 dollars 13 good rx price 11 dollars 40 and the cost plus drugs price nine dollars it's great okay hey do you know how they come up with retail prices on these no so when they you, first put out, the very first put out the medication, at the very uh, beginning, way back after the NIH already gives them half the money to do research. So don't let any drug companies tell you that it costs so much to do it because it's 48% of all drug um, to find all, all the research for it. 48% comes from the NIH. So the federal government- well, That's big it. because that's like, that's their whole justification. It's that's why they're saying that they should be able to set whatever price they want because they have to put all this money into it. And 48% of it comes from the government. From the NIH. Just, just it's out there already. So they're already, but when they do that, they set a price right when it comes out of the price that you pay. I mean, that it's that's retail price. And, and then they put right underneath there what the generic price will be initially. And then what happens is all of your insurance is say, okay, well, if that's the price, we're going to lower the price to this when they walk through the retail store. So it'll say $2,000, but then they'll say, but we're only going to pay you cost plus this. Most insurances pay cost plus. And most mm. of the time he gets three. Right now, Mr. Cuban's asking for $3 for a dispensing fee. I get like $1.10 for a dispensing fee. So what he's doing should be very feasible for all pharmacists. And if you're paying that much right now, if you went into a place and you paid more than $10 for your, your Pred Pack, you've been paying way too much. Mm. So, but that's how oh, they do it. They set it up initially and it never changes. Mm. So that's, that's good to know. And it's, that's, you know, I know marketing, marketing is very important, right? It, right. Without, without marketing that uh, essentially nothing would ever sell, but it seems like there's, there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors going on here um, with showing the retail prices and then the cost plus drugs price, because at the end of the day, that's not necessarily what people are paying for it. No, but it's, you should be educated. That's the other thing is yes. if you don't, you should be educated. And I love that this makes it so people say what's going on out here. So right. if that's all it does, kudos to Mark Cuban, like kudos right. that he had people say, start looking like what he did there. Everybody should be grateful to him just because he's saying, wake up and look at this. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I mean, we, we may be pointing out some, some flaws and, um, and some things that, that look a little bit more beautiful and amazing than they actually are. But I just want to take a second and express my gratitude toward Mark Cuban for doing this um, right. and for the level of transparency that he does have, regardless of the marketing and everything. I think that this is a really good start to some positive change. So and, thank you. And it's amazing that he decided to say, okay, this is enough. Because right. he didn't have to do any, I'm guaranteed, he does not know what he pays for his own medication. I tell well, you, what are the other billionaires stuff. doing right now? They're building right. phallic rocket ships and flying into outer space just to say that they were the first ones to go to outer space. 
Oh, yeah. And don't worry about messing with the cryptocurrencies and taking money from the little guy either. But, well, that's a way different topic. Let's just stay away from that right now. Yeah, let's stay away from that. Let's stay away from that. All right. So next we have uh, another oldie but goodie. Um, this is, uh, I'm not even, I actually don't even know if I can pronounce the, <laughs> you might have to help me, Phil. So, nor, nor gestimate, ethyl, ethanol, estradiol. Oh, I blew it. It was great. It's it was a birth perfect. control. You know what else is nice is we're real people. Like I say things yeah. wrong all the time. <laughs> Tell me to say eczema or eczema. The place will go nuts. They hate Oh it. my gosh. Eczema. That's hilarious. They go crazy. So, so uh, the the brand name. So we'll call it ortho. Let's call it ortho tricycline. Ortho Yes, Let's exactly. Thank you. Ortho tricycline. We all know. So this is a birth control, right? Uh, which I'm not prescribing a lot out of ERs. Okay. So in my defense for not knowing how to pronounce the generic for that, um, I just a quick reminder while we're talking about this one. If you're on birth control and you're lying to your OBGYN about smoking, I, I get that. I understand you don't you don't necessarily want it to be on the medical record that you smoke, but it's very important that you do not smoke and take birth control because you are at increased risk for strokes and heart attacks and blood clots. And so this is a very serious thing. This isn't just like, oh, do you smoke thing? This is your life may be in danger if you're doing these two things. So be aware you should not be on birth control and smoke, but really you should not be smoking. <laughs> it's 30%. It's a 30% increase of the, right. of stress. And it's huge. Right. So something, something we need to be aware of. Um, the retail price for this is $28 and 87 cents. The good RX price is $16 and 87 cents. And the cost plus drugs price is $7 and five cents. It's great. And it should right. be, it really should be free. Like if you ask me, there should be certain medications that you are can handed make some out. People mad by saying that, Phil. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not telling anybody to take it. It's just that if you want to take it, there's certain drugs that should be free to everybody that walks through the door. They just, they just should be free. If we're spending 150 billion dollars of federal funds, one way or the other, to give medications to people, because half of every dollar spent in the pharmacy comes from a federal funded agency. Imagine wow. if we just opened up a federal for, uh, formulary and anybody went in to get those medications for free. What would happen to diabetes and birth controls and blood pressure if they didn't have to pay? They could just go get it. Well, think about how much we pay by not taking care of these things in the long run, by right. letting people either be aware or not be aware of the fact that they have diabetes, right? So this is a little issue with preventative medicine in the U.S. in general is because we don't have preventative medicine, we don't diagnose these things until they're 10 years into, five years into a diagnosis of high blood pressure, hypertension, or diabetes, and then a ton of damage is already done. And even when it's discovered, they may not have insurance, they may not have the money to pay for these drugs out of pocket, um, and they may choose to not treat it. And then when you don't treat high blood pressure and diabetes long-term, then you end up with so many issues. You end up with kidney failure. Think about how expensive dialysis is to the country, which ultimately ends up taking care of people with kidney failure. That's all undiagnosed or undertreated hypertension and diabetes. They'll move to disability because they can't work because it was undiagnosed. So now not only that, but they can't even, then they start saying, oh, it's these people that don't want to work. But the truth is, by the time we do a lot of stuff because they can't help it, they have no choice but move they because our stupid system work. is a cliff. You have to go and go until you can finally get all the help. There's no you graduate. You can't work and have to go to dialysis for three to five hours, three times a week. It just doesn't happen. Nobody can do that. Right. And but you feel terrible too. We give away metformin 15 years earlier to the person for free. Now they get Save five millions. years more productivity. Millions in the long run. Right. Um, so we can go on and on about it. Right. <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> this is I like mean, four hours here. I know. I know. Yeah. MI strokes, all this stuff. Uh, all of this <laughs> could, if not be prevented completely, because you can't keep somebody alive forever. Right. But it would really prolong the years that they are able to actively contribute to our economy. Uh, so okay. with that birth control, it's six dollars, right? Right. How much does it cost for them to come to you in an ER because they think they might be pregnant because they don't know who else to go to? How many? <laughs> how many six dollars can you put there? Oh my gosh! <laughs> and it happens all the time, all the time. Whether they're just coming in for a pregnancy test or they're coming in because they have abdominal pain and they have no idea that there's a baby in there. Right. So six dollars is cheap compared to an ER visit. That's a safe. <laughs> 
Absolutely. You're right about that. All right, moving on. Let's see here. We have um, Esomeprazole. All right. The brand name that people know, uh, one of them is Nexium. And this is mostly for acid reflux um, or, or ulcers. The retail price, $216.66. The good RX price, $18.48. And the cost plus drugs price, $6. And you can get it over the counter for about ten or twelve without seeing the doctor. Yeah, it's that's the other thing is it's, it's you don't now you don't have to, have to send get it for that, now you don't have to this one this one's different this one you can just go over and walk over there and buy a huge count of bottle you could go right onto whatever your favorite website and not even have to worry about it and send it and it would cost you more but I don't know if more with the doctor's visit. Right, you're absolutely right about but that. It's but it's a great you should product. be following a doctor if you're going to do it for more than fourteen days. I exactly. think kind of the limit of the over the counter um, access it is 14 days, although nobody's actually looking whether you buy it every 14 days or not. No, but you but shouldn't you be because long term you could end up with kidney issues, et cetera. Well, or even you're hiding an ulcer. I mean, there's some other issues right. with it. So right. I do always that's think you point. should see your doctor too. Yes. But yes. I, that's a good price. And it's crazy that people pay more than about $10, $15 on that. So nuts. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Aripiprazole. This is Abilify. This is for um, mental health disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression. Um, the retail price six hundred and seventy-seven dollars and eighty cents. The good RX price seventeen dollars and sixty-one cents, and the cost plus price six dollars. So Medicaid pays me three dollars and fourteen cents to dispense that to someone. Hmm. Just to give people even more of a concept of what's going on. Right. So. Utah Medicaid pays me about $3.14 for 30 days of that one. Wow. So there's a whole, one day, one day when I'm not, when, when I'm not worried about retribution, one day we need to sit down and show really how this all rolls through. But like right. it, it, would, it would drive people crazy to know that when they pay their deductible with their insurance, the amount you pay the pharmacy is substantially more than after you meet your deductible and the insurance has to pay. They'll pay me less than you paid me last month when they have to pay. They'll make you pay more than what they pay me next month. That's kind of a scary thing in in our world that we're both kind of starting to dip into because um, cause I don't know if you guys know, but Phil's my pharmacist, even though he has a bajillion followers on TikTok, this guy just started in October. Right. It's February. This guy is killing it. Killing yeah, it's it. been good. It's been so fun. Well, you know, in addition to getting free cookies, um, I know it feels good to be able to to put information out there that could potentially help people. And you're doing that. And so gratitude coming right at you, my man. Well, I love your stuff. So I've been watching for a long time. <laughs> And the way you do it is a really good way because you keep it fun, you keep it light, but then you can be serious and you're okay not always saying things that people maybe didn't want to hear, but yeah. then your smile and laugh afterwards, they'll, they'll accept it from you. So you're doing a great job. to shake my hair a little bit and don't be That's right. Me. I didn't just say that little serious <laughs> thing. I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man. Um, but I bring that up because, you know, we're dipping into this new world and, uh, and I worry sometimes talking about stuff like this, talking about what makes U.S. healthcare so expensive. This whole series, WTF U.S. healthcare, is this going to get me in trouble? Am I, could my job be at risk one day? And I don't really know the answer to that. Obviously, um, I'm not coming after anybody that employs me. I, um, I'm very grateful for, for my position. But at the same time, everyone in the world, not just the U.S., everyone in the whole world knows that we have a huge problem here and we have to fix it because the U S population, their health and their well being and their happiness is all suffering actively. This isn't just like a, maybe in the future, things are going to get bad kind of a thing. They're already bad right now and everybody knows it. So yeah, we're, I, we're, you know, we're a dumpster. The U S health system right now is a dumpster fire and people are jumping out. Like yes. your nurses are looking at it thinking, why would I go through this much trouble to do this when I can go around the corner and get a job at this factory and not have to not have to do with any of this and without the nurses. And we have doctors that are cracking a pharmacist. Just wait one day. I'm going to be like on one of those true crime things. and There'll be a three cars <laughs> chasing me across state lines or whatever. I mean, that's where we're at. It's just insane. People, and people with your level of education. <laughs> Um, trying to harm people in the masses is terrifying to me. So, <laughs> Phil, please don't go to the dark side. Don't go to the dark side. 
<laughs> but it's just more of the fact that your people you meet in the healthcare system, they need a hug. They need to told they're doing, doing really well. There are all these people who make all this money in between us. Right. And that's where the problem the is. So, so when you walk into your Walgreens or Walmart or Caremark, go tell the pharmacist he's doing a good job. Go tell the nurse that comes in the room who made you wait. I'm really glad you're there because it's a dumpster fire out right there. People are quitting just to go work at Starbucks because they can't handle it. And you need right. those people. You need to go tell them thanks. Maybe not hug them because, well, that gets creepy. But, you know, and maybe of just say I want to hug you. And then maybe not even that. That's creepy, too. Something. We'll I would like to hug you. <laughs> 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 but you're absolutely right. The people that are at the bedside, the, the pharmacists, the RTs, the techs, the nurses, the doctors, we're on your side. I've said this before, but we are on your side. We are just as frustrated with the healthcare system as you are. And it's not us. We're not the people who are hiking up these prices. And we're also not the people who are financially benefiting. I mean, we all have good pay and we have stable jobs and everything. And yes, it's trying, but these are great jobs. But at the end of the day, we're not making out like these middlemen. The middlemen are the ones been, that are raking it in. It's there hasn't us. been an increase to reimbursements to pharmacists, doctors, nurses in five years, almost seven. So you look at inflationary costs and the fact that we have seen no increases we're not even keeping up with inflation. We can't even, I, I've almost, I, my, my employees now make almost 30% more than the last time I saw a raise come in. Wow. And it's because I love my employees and I'm not oh. going to let them suffer because that's they'll you're stick. doing. But if not, they would have left and I would have had to pick somebody else up. And that's, we have to do something better. And I'm glad you're doing this series because that's what you're saying. Let's do something better. Let's do something better. Let's be better. Let's let's push change. Nurses are already talking about it. May 12th, man. I, you know, I, I posted about, you know, essentially there's something that's trying to work its way through legislative processes throughout America right now about capping um, travel nursing pay, which I understand because it's getting really expensive for these hospital systems. But that is the most un-American thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. Capping uh, pay? Yeah, well, it's, it's crazy too, because go look at a nurse that's doing okay, because I can't find one. Can you? I mean, they're mm -hmm. all nope. strung out. No. And they're talking about doing a mass walkout. May 12th, they're talking about doing a million nurse march. They're just walking out of their jobs and seeing what happens to the healthcare system. And that well, is terrifying to me well let's just get the pharmacists and the doctors to join them can you imagine mass what revolution happen? and then you know oh what though gosh. all the guys in the middle that that push all that paper who tell people they can't have procedures the ones that say you can't have your medication that you and i get to be the bad guys for right yes they yeah. miss a day we don't even notice Right. We don't even care. They it's true. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. But the problem it's, with the problem with the idea of walking out is that I mean that's that is the strength that they have is to, is in unity. But you walk out and people might die. You know what I mean? And so right. I think these some of these healthcare companies know this and they're like, prove it. And that's I don't that's think, that's, I don't, that's dangerous. I don't think that's they a know dangerous the nurses. Game of chicken. I, I don't think they know the nurses I know. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't threaten a nurse. How about you? <laughs> I wouldn't threaten a nurse. I would well, obviously, a nurse. they need to get, get to know the people they're talking about. Because you threaten a nurse, you are in trouble. Right. The best thing to do is bring them Diet Coke and some cookies and say you're sorry. <laughs> Just I'm telling you right now, healthcare system, go take them cookies and say you're sorry. It's the only way out. I completely agree. I'm going to do that when I show up to work tonight at 11 p.m. <laughs> I can't wait for my overnight shift, by the way. <laughs> okay, let's move on. This will be, uh, I think, our last one that we do, if I can unlock my phone. This one is finasteride. Okay, that's the generic. The brand name is Propecia. This is used um, for uh, prostate issues, BPH, um, sometimes with prostate cancer, also with male um, um, pattern um, baldness. Bald. Um, the retail price, $50.22. GoodRx price, $22.62. And the cost plus drugs price, $4.50. Which is 50 cents higher than most places are higher. But like a lot of places already have the club. So if you go to Kroger's Club or, or, or Karen, they're already $4 at those places. Wow. Okay. But it's still good. And I also, it's good for people to know. Like I, I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Mr. Cuban, for putting it out there. Thank you, Mr. Cuban. Excellent. So, but I do want to show so, you one thing. I got one thing I want to talk about. You ready? Yes, I'm I ready. Brought 
You ready? Twinkies, ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Twinkies. So what all these medications we're talking about are the generic medications, right? So yes. $350 billion last year was spent in the United States on medications, right? Mm. The ones he's talking about, all of it that we're talking about is this much. It's one Twinkie. 75% mm. of the costs come from brand name drugs, 75%, and not one brand name drug's on there. So let's take the one Twinkie, and let's say he takes the price in half, right? Out of all those Twinkies, you still have to pay three and a half Twinkies of all that $350 billion, right? There's a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. We need to fix all the Twinkies. This is not going to change what we need to change. It is good, though. <laughs> I love how you break things that's, down in a really simple way like that. But that's what it is. Just so you know, 75% of them are brand name drugs and nobody's doing anything about it. Well, it's, that's, that's a very good point. This, the cost plus drugs, um, pharmacy online pharmacy is not an all inclusive list. These have been very carefully selected, um, for, you know, essentially interventions to lower the price um, as, as much as they possibly can. Again, we appreciate this very much, but there is uh, a big problem that, that is still um, out there and, uh, and it, is, it has not been solved. We're, we're moving in the right direction with this level of transparency, which again, I, I, very, appreciate, I very much appreciate, um, but let's, let's address the monster. <laughs> yeah, and I think the thing is, is I think that later on people start talking and say, well, is there a solution? There's actually a really easy solution. The UK's figured it out. Canada's figured it out. Yep. They're pretty nice guys. I don't know if you've talked to people from the UK and Canada, but they're pretty nice. They'll tell us what they're doing. Right. They, the Canadians they, will invite you to dinner and tell you what they're doing. So, I mean, they're even nicer. So We would not be reinventing the wheel. That is, that is one of the great things about us being so slow <laughs> to evolve <laughs> in the healthcare world is that we are, would not be the first country. In fact, we would be one of the last developed countries, if not the last. And I'm not going to jump into that now, but I'm just saying there's a way and it's not like it's not just out there in our face. Right. What are the two biggest factors driving up prices in the pharmacy world? Okay, easy. I'll do it in one. You ready? Yes. You ready? Yes. So you have basically four processing companies. You got Optum, you got Caremark, you got Express Scripts, you got Humana. There's basically four, maybe more, right? Mm -hmm. And they're called PBMs. And they are called prescription benefit managers. And anybody out there who wants to know why drugs are getting expensive, go look what happened before PBMs versus after PBMs. Mm. So in life, you can count on two things from human beings, greed and laziness. And it's always one of those two you can count on. And these PBMs had enough money to spend a trillion dollars on buying a healthcare system while the prices skyrocketed. So what we need to do is start a GoFundMe to get ourselves a senator, and then we can change things. So buy a senator, GoFundMe, will we get away with that? <laughs> you start it up. I'll donate to it, buddy. <laughs> so that's going to be your problem is that middlemen, middlemen take 38% of $350 billion dollars. So can you, can you explain what a pharmacy benefit manager is for people who so are unaware? On your card, pharmacy? when you flip over your card, you'll find a name like Caremark or Express Scripts or Optum. And their goal is to help contain pharmacy costs. But then they start their own mail order system, which they force you to. So they gain federal funds. They tell you where you can spend it and which medications you can use. And then they make you buy it from them. And so the interim that's in there, the reimbursement to pharmacies has dropped every year for the last 10 years, mm. every single year. And guess what's going up? It, <laughs> and, it's, and it's not going up. And so what's happening is cost of good of pharmacies are going up some, but the actual costs come from those brand name drugs. But then we get into the idea that brand name drugs actually give money back to the PBMs to make them preferred on their list. So if you spend $300 on it, they get $50 back. Mm. And so you get these... And it happens quite often. So when you start talking the way that the PBM works, if you took the PBM out of the system today, and this is where I probably now just lost all my contracts. So if I am looking for a job, if you've got, I'm actually really good with garage doors and construction. So I'll come up with my, you know. We're going to start a GoFundMe for you right you after we the, finish this. If you move the PBMs out, first of all, you just saved almost 40% of all the costs today. Mm. And 
federal government's already paying for 50% of all the drugs already, so don't say that we're not on socialized medicine. We're already there. Mm -hmm. If you got rid of that middleman, made a national formulary, so then you went to the drug manufacturer and say, these drugs every American gets for free, now all of a sudden drug companies have to be responsible to a low, low, low price. And then you as a physician say, well, you can have Gleevec because it's on the national formulary. If you want the other one, it, it, you'll have to go through your other insurance. Mm -hmm. If you took those two things out, so costs were contained by the federal government by making their own generics the way that people want to, right. and you got rid of the PBMs, we would be the lowest price in any place. Well, and that's there's what also I something. There's also something that people that are below a certain uh, economic threshold need to know about, and these are, um, you know, through your community clinics. Um, they're the 340B pharmacies. Right, and it's not that it's not as low as you would think. Like if you, it's you can be doing okay, making your mortgages, do that stuff, and those 340Bs are available to you. So something worth exploring if you're having difficulty covering um, the cost of your prescription drugs, look into these 340B pharmacies that exist. Now you have to have prescriptions apparently from a primary care physician who's going through these community clinics for them to be able to fill it at one of these pharmacies, but they can get your drugs at absurdly low prices because it's subsidized by the government, correct? Right, right. and it's a really good program because it fits those people who aren't quite to the Medicaid level that really mm -hmm. still want to work and still want to be productive and they still want to do that, but they can't get there. So the 340Bs are good programs mm -hmm. and they're in almost every community has a 340B. How would somebody that, you know, is listening right now, how, how would they access these? Would they just look up community clinic in my area? If you is put there three, a... Five, there's a Medicare list of all the 340B pharmacies. So if you mm -hmm. put Medicare 340B pharmacies, there's a list, they have to be listed. So they would tell you where they're at. Awesome. And, and so, so essentially so they, you could go to that pharmacy, that pharmacy would be like, I would love to help you out. You need to go to this clinic and they'll end up prescribing what you need. Yeah. And then once you start going to see one doctor there, there are some rules around. So if, if you really like Dr. J Mack and you wanted him to be the one that prescribed your birth control. So, cause he's going to get better at the names. So when that happens, you could still, if you're seeing a primary care there, they can get it to where you can still get the 340B prices, but it would still be better if, every pharmacy had access to the 340B. So you could go right. to the pharmacy you want and get the same prices to limit the way that they are. Seems like a cumbersome, unnecessary thing. If you have your, I make the 340B, why can't you get them every place at that price? That would be even easier, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Phil, you've we been extremely, it. we can, we can do this guys. Easy. WTF, US healthcare. What we the got fix? it. That's what we're going to call this series. WTF US healthcare for what the fix US healthcare right. cuz we're going to fix it. Dang Easy. it. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Man Phil, you have been educational, you have been entertaining. Uh you you we just appreciate you so much for coming on and and breaking things down for us and helping us to understand better what Mark Cuban has done with this Cost Plus Drugs pharmacy and what we still need to do in the future. Hey, thank you so much. We better do it again or I'll be disappointed. Let's do it, bro. I'm in. <laughs> All right. We'll see you. <laughs> Later, Big Daddy. This is Dr. J. Mack signing off for another episode of WTF US Healthcare. Thank you so much to our amazing guest, Phil's My Pharmacist. Check him out on TikTok. Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on YouTube. He's educational. He's entertaining. He's the man. So thank you so much. Phil's my pharmacist. And don't forget to subscribe.